This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading is by Michael Sirwa, Michael.Sirwa, S I R O I S dot com. Penguin Island by Anatole France. Book Two The Ancient Times. Book Two, Chapter Eight The Dragon of Alca. Continuation. Following the counsel of the Holy Mail, the inhabitants of Alca endeavored to uproot the superstitions that had sprung up amongst them. They took care to prevent the girls from dancing with incantations round the fairy tree. Young mothers were sternly forbidden to rub their children against the stones that stood upright in the fields, so as to make them strong. An old man of Dombe, who foretold the future by shaking grains of barley on a sieve, was thrown into a well. However, each night the monster still raided the poultry yards and the cattle sheds. The frightened peasants barricaded themselves in their houses. A woman with child who saw the shadow of a dragon on the road, through a window in the moonlight, was so terrified that she was brought to bed before her time. In those days of trial, the holy male meditated unceasingly on the nature of dragons and the means of combating them. After six months of study and prayer, he thought he had found what he sought. One evening, as he was walking by the sea with a young monk called Samuel, he expressed his thought to him in these terms. I have studied at length the history and habits of dragons, not to satisfy a vain curiosity, but to discover examples to follow in the present circumstances. For such, Samuel, my son, is the use of history. It is an invariable fact that dragons are extremely vigilant. They never sleep, and for this reason we often find them employed in guarding treasures. A dragon guarded at Colchis the golden fleece that Jason conquered from him. A, a dragon watched over the golden apples in the garden of the Hesperides. He was killed by Hercules and, and transformed into a star by Juno. This fact is related in some books. And if it be true, it was done by magic, for the gods of the pagans are in reality demons. A dragon prevented barbarous and ignorant men from drinking at the fountain of Castalia. We must also remember the dragon of Andromeda, who, which was slain by Perseus. But let us turn from these pagan fables, in which error is always mixed with truth. We meet dragons in the histories of the glorious archangel Michael, of St. George, uh, St. Philip, St. James the Great, St. Patrick, St. Martha, and, and St. Margaret. And it is in such writings, since they are worthy of full credence, that we ought to look for comfort and counsel. The story of the dragon of Selena offers us particularly precious examples. Uh, you must know, my son, that on the banks of a vast pool, close to that town there dwelt a dragon who sometimes approached the walls and, and poisoned with his breath all who dwelt in the suburbs, and that they might not be devoured by the monster. The, the inhabitants of Selena delivered up to him one of their number every morning. The victim was chosen by lot, and after a hundred others the, the lot fell upon the king's daughter. Now St. George, who was a military tribune, as he passed through the town of Selena, learned that the king's daughter had just been given to the fierce beast. He immediately mounted his horse, and armed with his lance, rushed to encounter the dragon, whom he reached just as the monster was about to devour the royal virgin. And when St. George had overthrown the dragon, the king's daughter fastened her girdle round the beast's neck, and he followed her like a dog led on a leash. That is an example for us of the power of virgins over dragons. The history of St. Martha furnishes us with a still more certain proof. Uh, do, do you know the story, Samuel, my son? Uh, y yes, father, answered Samuel. And the blessed male went on. There was a forest on the banks of the Rhone, between Arles and Avignon, a, a dragon half quadruped and half fish, larger than an ox, with sharp teeth like horns and huge wings at his shoulders. He sank the boats and devoured their passengers. Now St. Martha, at the entreaty of the people, approached this dragon, whom she found devouring a man. She put her girdle round his neck, and led him easily into the town. 
These two examples lead me to think that we should have recourse to the power of some virgin, so as to conquer the dragon, who scatters terror and death throughout the island of Alca. For this reason, Samuel, my son, gird up thy loins and go, I pray thee, with two of thy companions, into all of the villages of this island, and proclaim everywhere that a virgin alone shall be able to deliver the island from the monster that devastates it. Thou shalt sing psalms and canticles, and thou shalt say, O sons of the penguins, if there be among you a pure virgin, let her arise and go, armed with the sign of the cross, to combat the dragon. Thus the old man spake, and Samuel promised to obey him. The next day he girded up his loins, and set out with two of his companions, to proclaim to the inhabitants of Alco that a virgin alone would be able to deliver the penguins from the rage of the dragon. End of chapter 8